grade go math chapter 3 lesson 9 essential question how can place value help you subtract decimals unlock the problem Hannah has 3 and 36 hundredths kilograms of apples and 2 and 28 hundredths kilograms of oranges Hannah estimates she has about one more kilogram of apples than oranges how many more kilograms of apples than oranges does Hannah have? How can you use this estimate to decide if your answer is reasonable? Press pause and squiggle underline what you are being asked to find. Circle the important numbers and then also underline any clue words as to what operations you will be doing. You should have squiggled underlined the two questions there's two question marks here so how many more kilograms of apples and oranges does Hannah have and then how can you use her estimate to decide if your answer is reasonable the important numbers are what she has that's three and thirty six kilograms and then two and twenty eight hundredths kilograms and then we also needed to know that her estimate was one more and the clue words that I underlined was how many more. That tells me that I'm going to be doing subtraction. So I'm taking the apple, the larger, the apples, and subtracting the amount of oranges from it because they just want to know the difference between them. And we can fill out this square right here in the blue. What operation will we use? We will use subtraction and then we already have circled the estimate. So the first step, subtract the hundredths first. If there are not enough hundredths, regroup one tenths as one hundredths. Um, but the step even before this is to line up your decimals. Right there I have them all lined up. So then I have my decimal here. And then I start on the right and work my way left. So hundredths. We're subtracting six hundredths minus eight hundredths. Six hundredths minus eight hundredths. Can I take away eight from six? No, I cannot. So that means I need to regroup. My three to becomes a two, and my six is sixteen. Now can I take away eight? Yes. 16 minus 8 is 8. The next step is then subtract the tenths and the ones it regroup as needed. So I have 2 minus 2, and that is 0. And then I have 3 minus 2, which is 1. And if we fill in this part, we had 2 tenths minus 2 tenths equals 0 and then we had 3 ones minus 2 ones which leaves us with 1 1 okay so we recorded the difference that just as we went so now we should draw a quick picture to show our work how many and remember on subtraction you only draw the top number so we have three ones, three tenths, and six hundredths. So there's my quick picture. And then we knew that um, I needed to break one of my tenths up into hundredths, into ten hundredths, so that I'm able to actually take away eight. So there goes five, six, seven, eight. And then I still took away two hundredths, and then I took away two ones. And what am I left with? I am left with one and eight hundredths. So Hannah has one and eight hundredths more kilograms of apples than oranges. That answered our first question up here, right here of how many more kilograms does Han of apples than oranges does Hannah have, but we still have a second question of how can you use 
her estimate of one to decide if your answer is reasonable? Well, it's really as simple. I mean, that sounds like it should use a long explanation, but it's really quick. One and eight hundredths is close to one on a number line. So one and eight hundredths is close to one, so the answer is reasonable. That's all you need to say when you're using an estimate to justify your answer. So now we're going to move on to the try this. And we're going to actually use addition to check. Because remember, inverse operations means that they undo each other. So addition and subtraction are inverse operations. And then multiplication and division are inverse operations. So we can check our subtraction by adding. But first we have to practice our subtraction. So step one is find the difference. Remember the word difference tells us that we're doing a subtraction problem. And so because the difference is the answer to a subtraction problem. So we subtract the hundreds first. But even before that, what do I tell you to do? I tell you to line up your decimals. In addition and subtraction, they need to be lined up. That, which that's what they did here. And you can see that by lining them up, they didn't accidentally put the 2 over the 3. What do we put in this square? 14 and 2 tenths doesn't have any um, digit in the hundredths place, but can it? Yes, it can. We just need to add a zero to it. So now, can I subtract three from zero? No, I cannot, so I need to regroup. And I'll have 10, breaking a tenth apart. So 10 minus three is seven. 1 minus 6. Can I take 6 from 1? I cannot. I need to regroup. Oh, I skip over the decimal and that 4 becomes a 3. 11, because I'm breaking that into 10 tenths. So 11 minus 6 is 5. I bring down my decimal because it needs to stay aligned. 3 minus 8 that can't happen, so I would regroup. 13 minus 8 is 5, so 5 and 57 hundredths. Now I need to check my answer. Let's say I'm not quite sure I did it right. So you check your answer. To do that, you add the difference to the number you subtracted, if the sum matches the number you subtracted from, your answer is correct. Basically what they're saying is work it backwards. So start with your difference and it goes to the top, lining up your decimal, 5 and 57 hundredths. Take the number you subtracted and it stays in the same spot but now it's addition instead of subtraction, and our answer should match what we started with. Okay, so let's check. 7 plus 3 is 10. I have my 0 and I regroup. Um, 5 and 6 is 11, plus the 1 that I regrouped is 12. Regroup, make sure I bring my decimal down. Um, 5 and 8 is 13, plus 1 is 14. Do they match? That's yes. Big smiley face. And so now, if we look at our question here, it says, is your answer correct? Explain. Explain means you have to give more than a yes or no answer. So, is our answer correct? Yes. And then explain how we know that our subtraction answer is correct. 
I simply restated exactly what we were talking about up here, that my 14 and 20 hundredths matches what I started with. So I said, yes, when I add my answer to the number, that's what that symbol means, number I subtracted, I get what I started with, 14 and 20 hundredths. So now, as you work at your share and show, you're going to see that they're still asking for estimates in the first three. So you need to round, and it's okay to just round them to the um, nearest whole number. So make sure you do your estimates, because the directions say to estimate, and then find the actual. Um, and then on 4, 5, and 6, they tell you to find the difference, but then they tell you to also check your answer which means to show me the addition problem. Okay, so step one, two, and three is estimate. Four, five, and six show the check with addition. Press pause and work. On number three, you had to borrow across to zero, so make sure that you um, didn't just skip through it and go through the motions. Okay, on four, five, and six, I need to see both a subtraction problem and an addition problem. When you are setting up your addition problem, make sure that you lined up your decimals. So I took 2,700 and I'm adding 43 hundredths. My decimals are aligned. Bring it down. Regroup. 4 and 2 is 6 plus 1 is 7. Do these match? Yes, they do. I am good. On number 5, they lined up your decimals, but there's no digit above the 4. So if you needed to, fill in the zero so that you can make sure that you kept it aligned and then do your subtraction. And when you're setting it up, remember, you take your difference, your answer, and you line up your decimals. The bottom stays the same, eight and four hundred. This is going to be addition and then I should be getting 13 and 2 tenths or 13 and 20 hundredths. 10, 2 decimal, 5 and 8 is 13. Do they match? Yes, they do. That's good. And on number 6, again, you're, you have an empty space here. And then subtract, regrouping as you need. And when you're doing your check, you take what you found and add it to the number you took away, lining up your decimals. And then you should get your number from the top. That's 10, 6 and 1 is 7, and 1 is 8. Decimal, it's in line. 9 and 6 is 15. Do they match? Yes, they do. Double check your work. Make sure you didn't make any silly mistakes. And then, good job. You may now move on to the on your own sections. Remember that when it tells you to estimate, you need to round to generally the nearest whole number. And then if it tells you to check your answer, I must see an addition problem.